Now at 11, danger on the streets of Northeast Portland. A driver plows into a group of people. What witnesses say happened just moments before that crash. And a bizarre carjacking in broad daylight. It started with a man demanding a ride to the hospital, and it isn't over yet. Plus, local supporters of President Trump called for a peaceful rally today in Vancouver, but that wasn't what they got when protesters clashed. And finally, countdown to history. We're less than 24 hours away from the biggest game in college basketball. We'll take you live to Arizona as the excitement and anticipation builds. KGW News at 11 starts right now. This is KGW News at 11. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Christine Pitawanich in for Nina Melhoff. We start with a frightening story out of southeast Portland. Officers say a man drove into a crowd of people and tonight several of them are hurt. It happened on 97th Avenue near Burnside. KGW's Mike Benner spoke with witnesses. He's live outside the Multnomah County Jail with all the details. Mike. Yeah, Christine, detectives spent a lot of the evening questioning the suspect. We expect him to be booked at some point tonight. In the meantime, uh, we are told that he was under the influence of something at the time of the crash, but witnesses say that is no excuse. They believe this was a deliberate act. Oh, so I'm kind of at a loss for words. But Speechless. The best describes how Merle guy. Meacham is feeling, and here's why. He says the driver of this banged up car mowed down his neighbors. I, I can't say on TV what I really think of the guy. I just I just know that it, it's it's a shame. Meacham says it all started early Sunday morning. The suspect driver was cruising up and down Southeast 97th Avenue. 50 miles an hour, spinning tires around the corner. By late afternoon, Meacham says neighbors had grown tired of the act. They yelled at the guy to slow down and cool it. Apparently, he didn't appreciate it. Stared him right down in the eye and just sped straight for him. Cranked the wheel over. Meacham says the man drove his car into a crowd of his neighbors. The impact so intense, several heavy vehicles were knocked out of the way. I have grandkids that live with me, and fortunately they're not home today. They, they play out in the street right here. This photo shows paramedics tending to one of the victims. He and one other man went to the hospital. The extent of their injuries is unclear, but they should be okay. Truly remarkable if you ask investigators. Well, it's very frightening to see uh, some of the destruction behind us. Neighbors agree. In fact, they can't help but let their minds wander. Anything could have happened. So fortunately, nobody was killed. Again, the suspect in this case should be booked shortly if he hasn't already, and he should make his first court appearance sometime tomorrow. Christine. Thank you, Mike. Now to a scary situation that happened today. Police are looking for a carjacking suspect. Officers say he stole a woman's car near Mount Scott Park on Southeast 72nd. It all unfolded around 1030 this morning. A woman says she was driving when a man stopped her, claiming that she had hit him. He got in the car, ordered her to drive him to the hospital. Then listen to this. He said he had a weapon and forced her out of the car. We're told the guy drove off, but he didn't make it far. The 2017 Toyota Corolla he stole broke down. He took off running. Police searched the area, but they didn't find him. It's kind of creepy because I'm mean, especially with the park right there, you know, little kids and stuff like that. It could have been some bad person out there. Yeah, they're still looking for the uh, for the suspect from what we understand. That's scary. Yeah, because I like I like this neighborhood, but you know, stuff like that, that's kind of scary. Today's carjacking comes just days after a man stole a car with a sleeping child inside. It happened late Friday night near Southeast 117th and Division. That suspect abandoned the vehicle soon after stealing it. Officers think he got spooked when he noticed that a kid was sleeping in the back. At this point, there's no reason to believe that these cases are connected. But as always, if you have information on either case, contact police. Investigators tell us the suspect in today's carjacking has a tattoo of a number sign near his left eye. New to 
tonight, this KGW video showing a violent confrontation right outside the Portland building just last week. It's now at the center of a police investigation, and officers say they've arrested the man involved in that fight. Police say 45-year-old Philip Stan Schaefer was arrested this morning at a Northeast Portland Starbucks. Schaefer is charged with second-degree robbery and coercion. The fight broke out Wednesday afternoon during a protest centered on the shooting death of 17-year-old Quanis Hayes. No one was hurt, but soon after, police showed up in riot gear. The group that organized the rally, Don't Shoot People, PDX says Schaefer was trying to defend a fellow protester. They claim demonstrators are being unfairly targeted by police. They're focused on harassing us rather than keeping the public safety because they're going after people that are not um, like they're not violent people, but they're they're using their privilege and their opportunity to arrest them. Police have arrested seven people in total. Schaefer is expected in court tomorrow. And people came together in Vancouver this afternoon. Their goal? To show their support for President Donald Trump. One of the organizers of the Rally for Trump and Freedom says he's passionate and excited about his beliefs. He says he doesn't want Trump supporters to feel ashamed. He says he's all about supporting freedom, freedom to believe what you want and speak your mind. And he says events like this one are geared toward making states red again, but in a respectful way. The goal, though, is to keep it peaceful. Um, that's the main thing, and to just talk about love and God and just keep things clean. Counter-protesters showed up as well. There was a small scuffle, but police were there to break it up and keep the peace. Vancouver police say they did make a few arrests. President Trump is again accusing the media of missing the real story behind Russia's involvement in the U.S. election. The White House is also hoping for a victory in Congress tomorrow. The Senate Judiciary Committee is set to vote on Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the story from Washington. Republican Senator Rand Paul meeting President Trump Sunday for golf and talk on replacing Obamacare. I think the sides are getting closer and closer together. Earlier, the president took to Twitter to vent again about the media's coverage of Russia's meddling in the U.S. election, tweeting the real story turns out to be surveillance and leaking. Find the leakers. This is Senate Republicans' pushback at suggestions a special prosecutor is needed to investigate after concerns that Republican Devin Nunes, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, is too close to the White House. It's just not necessary uh, based on what we know now. Uh, we've got a bipartisan investigation underway. It's called the Senate Intelligence Committee. The president's ambassador to the U.N. denies there is any love between Mr. Trump and the Kremlin. The president has not once called me and said, don't beat up on Russia. There's no love or anything going on with Russia right now, they get that we're getting our strength back, that we're getting our voice back, and that we're starting to lead again. The White House is hoping for a victory in Congress Monday when the Senate Judiciary Committee votes on Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. Democrats want to block the confirmation, but Republicans are threatening to invoke the so-called nuclear option, needing only a 51-vote majority. When a nominee doesn't get 60 votes, you shouldn't change the rules. You should change the nominee. But Republicans say they will use that option if necessary. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. And we've got a major traffic alert to tell you about tonight. Starting tomorrow morning, the Morrison Bridge in downtown Portland will be down to just one lane in each direction. It'll stay that way for the next six months. The project will replace the failing bridge deck, so it'll stop rattling when you drive across it. When it's done, the speed limit will go up and TriMet buses and heavy trucks will once again be able to cross it. They haven't been allowed across in three years. And as we get ready to start out the week, we could be looking at a string of dry days across the region. So let's check in now with Brian Brennan for a first look at your forecast. Hi, Brian. Hey, Christine. Yeah, we had a beautiful day today. We had a mix of sun and clouds. Right now, the clouds are clearing out. 44 degrees, starting to get a little bit chilly out there. Another dry day. We had some light showers, but nothing measurable at any of our weather monitoring stations. A few showers off the coast of Washington. That's about it. And like I said, those clouds clearing, that's going to allow the temperatures to drop down into the 30s tonight. Happy Valley already at 38 degrees. So you might wake up to some patchy frost, 
but you will all be talking about how gorgeous and how very spring-like Monday will be. We'll top out in the upper 50s, and we're going to get warmer from there. Some of the warmest temperatures we've had all year. We'll tell you about that in about 10 minutes. Christine? Yes, sounds so good.